Welcome to another beginner's Java tutorial from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial we're going to look at um, passing parameters to methods and in the next tutorial we'll get on to looking at set methods and setters. So um, I've got my main program already set up here, here and um, let's create a new class. I'll create a class called robot and um, let's have a, a method called speak. So I'll say um, public void speak. And this makes the robot say something, but I'll just put a sys out here and have it say hello. So in my main method now, I can already create objects from this robot. So I can say robot. Um, I need a, a name for the variable. So let's call it Sam equals new robot. And I can say sam.speak to make it say hello. And if I run this, so click the green run button there, then after my computer warms up a bit, it says hello. Now, often with methods, um, so we saw in the last tutorial that you can return values from methods. But another thing that you often want to do is you want to pass values into methods um, because often you want to somehow change the way that the method um, you want to change what it does slightly depending on some um, some kind of the value of some variable or you want to pass some data to the method for some reason and we're going to look at that in this tutorial so in the case of this speak method I might want to pass in some text and, I, and the robot then is going to read that text out instead of just saying hello so um, let's say let's look at how you do that um, basically, when you when you create a method, you'll notice there's there's always um, these two round brackets after the name of the method, and it's the same when you call the method. Like here, this actually makes this code run. Here, after the name of the method, again, again I've got these two round brackets, and um, these these two round brackets are actually a bit like a, a shoot, um, and you can throw data down the chute. So here's like the top end of the chute here and this is where the chute comes out. So um, what I could do is, let, let's supposing I put, supposing I want this um, robot to say um, not hello but uh, I don't know, hi I'm Sam. I could type some text here, hi I'm Sam. And so this is a bit like, this is a string, and I'm sort of throwing a string down the chute, if you like. And don't worry, we will look at the technical lingo in a minute. But here's the other end of the chute, and this is going to now receive this string. So I need to have a string here um, for this to kind of be shoved into, dropped into. So here I declare a string variable, like I could call it text or anything I like. But the important thing is that if I'm um, I'm passing a string in, throwing a string down the chute, here I need a string um, variable to receive it. And now I can use this text variable in my um, actual method body. So here I'll just pass it to sys out, and if I run that, it's going to say hi, I'm Sam. So to, to give a more technical explanation, what's happening is um, uh, this is called passing a parameter to the method. So this is a variable and this of course and this variable is available anywhere between these two curly brackets and I've just used it here but because this variable is um, declared within these two um, round brackets we call it a parameter. Um, so a parameter is like a, a variable that you pass into a method. Um, so here I'm passing a string into this method and it's appearing in this parameter and then I'm just using the value of the parameter here. So a, a parameter is called a parameter because um, a parameter is like something you kind of change or tweak. Like if you have a synthesizer you can kind of change the different frequency and the, you know, I don't know, the, the way it sounds by turning knobs and then you say you're kind of changing the parameters and this is a method parameter that changes the way the method works. So this is called passing in parameters. And um, let's let's look at how you do that with an integer. So if I want to say public void jump, 
and I want to tell it how high to jump. So int height, and I'll just output the kind of what I'm doing here with sys out just to show you it doing something. So I've said that this method um, takes one parameter of type integer, and outside of outside of this method, the name doesn't matter. It's only like here within the method that the name matters because you need a way to refer to the value that's passed in. So you need to call it something here. But when you're calling the method, so down here, if I say sam.jump, the only thing that matters is that the parameter is of type integer. So I've got to pass in an integer when I call the method. Otherwise, I get an error like this. So let's pass in um, the value 7. And if I run that, it's going to say jumping 7 which is output here. So I've passed that value in. And you can also have um, multiple parameters. You can say like, um, uh, what should I say? Let's have public void and um, move. And I'll have a direction, which will be a string. It'll be a compass direction. Direction. And uh, like north, south, east, or west. And um, I'll have a number of meters. So like int distance. Or it could be double, let's have a double. Double, so floating point value with a decimal point in it. Um, double distance, like that. And here I'll say moving distance um, in direction, direction, like that. And um, in fact, I'll say meters, let's say that's meters. So uh, when I call this method, I need to supply it with first a string and then a double value, and it needs to be in this order. That's very important. So if I say sam.move, I will need to give it a direction, a string, actually. So let's say west and um, a distance, let's say 12.2 meters. And if I run that, moving 12.2 meters, let's have a space actually before meters. So it says, it says moving 12.2 meters in direction west. So the important thing is that um, when you call the method, you have to you have to give it um, a list of things separated by commas that matches the kind of order of the parameter list here. And the things that you pass in have to have the same type as these parameters. And if you have more than one thing, then when you declare these parameters here, you've got to separate them by commas. And similarly, when you call the method and you pass in the values, you've got to separate them by commas. And um, that probably, if you if, you've, if it's the first time you've seen that, this will seem quite confusing. It took me ages to get my head around this, even though it's simple in a way. But just type it out and practice it and you'll gradually, it'll gradually sink in. You'll get the hang and see how it works. Um, now, I want to mention one, one thing that often confuses um, beginners certainly confused me when I started programming, which is supposing, let's take an example, supposing you have a, um, supposing I want to call sam.speak. Now we know um, Eclipse has just automatically put that in for me, but I'll delete it. Um, I've got to pass in a string to speak because the, the speak method takes one parameter of type string. Now supposing I have a string string here, which I could call um, greeting, and I'll set that equal to hello there, like that. So greeting is a type string, and speak expects a string. So I can pass greeting in to speak instead of literally typing something between quotes here, and that will work. So if I run that, it says hello there. So I'm here I'm creating a string with hello there in it, some text in it. Here I'm calling the method and passing the string to it. And then that string, that text appears here and it gets output here. And what's sort of confusing is that, um, so here we've got a string called greeting and here we're outputting a string. Um, and you kind of think, well, here I'm calling it greeting and here I'm calling it text and what's going on there? And um, really what's going on in this case is that. Um, so I've got, here is my string. This is the actual string that I'm dealing with and it's it's the same string all the way through here. But um, this variable really is just like a, a label that you use to refer to that string. So it's a bit like if this was a bike, 
this is a bit like um, a bit of paper that I've stuck on it and I've written the word greeting on that um, on that bit of paper, that label. So it's a greet, this, this will be a stupid thing to stick on a bike, but for a string, it makes sense. So that's that's literally like, um, it's literally like if, you, if you've got lots of bicycles and you want to identify a particular one, you write out a sticky paper label, write something on it, write a name on it and stick it on the bike. And then you can use that label to refer to the bike and say, um, you know, that's, um, that's the bike that I called, um, what would you call a bike actually? I, I, I've really got no idea, but supposing you've called your bike David, which is a bit crazy, then you could say that's David over there, my bike. So in this case, this string, this text is called greeting here. It's like a label that I've stuck on this string. And I use greeting here to refer to that text. I say, okay, I mean, by greeting, I mean this bit of text. But when it appears in the method here, the method gives it its own label. So the method doesn't care what you called it here. Um, it doesn't need to know, it doesn't matter. This method says, okay, I'm going to get a string and I'll call that string text. And here it's it's using that string by referring to its name, which is text. Um, hopefully that will kind of help um, if you're confused. Um, it does take a while to get your head around this. But the bottom line is that this this actually is the same string that you've got here. It's just that you you call it by a different name in your method. And the kind of reason for that really is that you, um, when you write your class, you, you don't want to care about what people call their own variables like here. And sim similarly, um, if you're using a class, you don't need to know what, um, what the parameters are called to the method. You just need to know their type. So you can call them anything you like in your own code, pass them in. As long as they've got the right type and they are in the right order, then Bob's your uncle, so to speak. And um, it works very slightly differently with um, primitive variables. So string is non-primitive. It's a class and you know that because it's got an uppercase letter here. With primitive variables, um, it's basically the same idea, but it's, it's actually slightly different um, in a way um, because um, Kind of like if, if I have an int variable down here, int value equals um, 14, let's say, and I say uh, sum.jump value. So that will work just the same, jumping 14. And um, the only difference is that whereas this is like a label, this is a bit more like a bucket, um, um, a bucket called value, in as much as here, this this, this is a bit of memory that actually contains this value and um, in the parameter list here I've got another kind of bucket that can also contain an integer and you're kind of sloshing this integer from this bucket value into this bucket height and then outputting it here um, so technically you know this is a value and this is a reference but I'm only mentioning mentioning this now just because um, if you keep hearing this if you're following these tutorials it'll gradually become clear in your head if you keep kind of thinking about it but for now um, I would just kind of practice declaring methods and passing parameters in and you'll gradually get the hang okay so in the next tutorial we're going to look at um, a kind of example of this we're going to look at set methods or setters and if you're lecture if you if you're following a university course and your lecturer um, has come forward in a time machine from like 1970 your lecturer may refer to set setters as mutators and um, we're also going to look at this which is um, very confusing to start with so we're going to look at set methods or setters and this but for now I recommend just practicing this a bit so join me again next time and if you're watching on YouTube um, please uh, click the subscribe button to be notified when I make new videos thank you very much and until next time happy coding